Hello and welcome to Beauty Diaries. My name is Namure Edemioya. Today on the program, we'll be talking about hair loss. So if I come on the streets now, I come to you as a woman and I tell you to take off your wig, what do I see? Apart from the weave you have on, do you still have hair in front? Most of us use different things to make sure that uh, we still have some hair in front. Some of us are gifted, we still have, you know, our hair there. But talking about hair loss, age, um, chemicals, hormones, a lot of things have affected us over the years and we have had, you know, to experience hair loss. Also for the men, as they grow, hair loss comes in with the baldness. And um, for us, we have Mama Yabo. That's what some of us call it in Nigeria, yeah. So today on the program, we'll be talking about hair loss, treatments, uh, prevention, and of course, so many other ways we can avoid it or treat it and getting to know the causes as well. When we come back, you'll be meeting our guests, very experienced in this area, and we'll be talking about hair loss for men and women. Stay tuned. Beauty You're welcome back. Our guest today is a senior consultant of Vinci Air Clinic in Nigeria. And um, he is, Vinci Air Clinic is a part of a global group in the world and the base here in Nigeria. And we, we had to make sure that we bring a professional to you. So Dr. Ayo. Otsubajo is our guest today on Beauty Diaries. You're welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I've been looking forward to this episode. And um, uh, first, let's let's just get into the business of it all. Mm. Hair loss. What is it all about? Hair loss or alopecia, as the technical term is. Traction uh, alopecia. Well, there are different, different types of alopecia. Okay. There are probably about six different types of awesome. alopecia. Okay. Uh, you've got the androgenetic alopecia, uh, which is what you typically see in possibly about 60 to 70 percent of men, and possibly about 40 percent of women as well uh, suffer from androgenetic alopecia. And then you've got traction alopecia, uh, which is what you were referring yes. to. The, <laughs> is it Mama Iko, Mama Yabo? I'm not Mama quite Yabo. sure. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, what we uh, we call it traction on. alopecia. So these are the two primary types of alopecia that we tend to see in, uh, in Africa. There are others, like alopecia areata, which is very rare, but has, you know, that's when you have a certain loss of hair overnight. Um, and then you've got uh, other types of alopecia related to medical conditions that you might be going through. For instance, autoimmune disease, you know, or lupus, which is one of the autoimmune mm. diseases, causes either a total loss of hair on the scalp, which we call totalis, or the total loss of hair, bodily hair, which we call universalis. Uh, and then there's psychiatricia alopecia, which is usually the result of uh, chemicals or glues that have been applied to the scalp, uh, which causes hair loss. So there are different types of okay. alopecia. Okay. Now, um, the basic ones, let's talk about what, what, is, what the experiences you're having in, mm. in your field nowadays sure. and also as a woman, what we are experiencing. We'll come back to the men. But okay. for us women, mm -hmm. we tend to lose a lot of hair in front. As, as, as young girls, sure. we, we could do anything. Then we used to use relaxers. Everybody's sure. going natural. Some mm. of us are going natural nowadays. Mm. Mm. And um, some are still using relaxers. Mm. We've gotten to know over time that these relaxers affect our hormones, our hair follicles, mm -hmm. if I'm correct, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah, as, as women mm. now, what do we do when we have, you know, traction alopecia or a result of baldness based on all of these things we use? Mm. And also our hormones. Mm. You realize that as uh, I had an experience some years ago, mm. I, I started getting... Yeah. Bold around. Psychiatricia. Okay. 
I, I was worried, but over time, it came back. Okay. I got to know it was stressed, that caused it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you travel out of the country, mm -hmm. you're not able to leave your own hair, mm -hmm. and it, it starts pulling off, falling mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. I'm asking a lot of questions because I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's break it down. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the people talk about hormonal uh, mm -hmm. causes of hair loss. Uh, certainly there is an element of truth in that. I mean, for instance, when women uh, get pregnant, the oestrogen level uh, is elevated. Oestrogen is obviously part of the hormones, you know, it's yeah. elevated. So they tend to see uh, a massive growth of hair. That's where you see, you know, pregnant yes. women <laughs> looking blossom. Um, as soon as they've given birth, the oestrogen level goes down. And the hair they've gained during pregnancy basically disappears over a period of time. So when people come to us there and say, oh, I've lost my hair. Well, you never had it before. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it, it really gave it to you. So that, that, that is a typical hormonal cause of hair loss. Then the, 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 the traction alopecia, uh, which you mentioned, uh, that is largely caused, you know, by the tight pulling uh, of the hair. I mean, traction is obviously pull, you yes. know, when you're pulling something. You know. So when you go into the salon and you do this tight braiding, yes. you know, I think they call it Ghana braids Ghana or weaves, Ghana yes. weaves or whatever. Um, um, and, you, idea, and, yes. you, and you have such incredible headache, you know, whilst they're doing it. I mean, if you think of what's going on with your follicles, uh, those are the roots of, mm -hmm. of the hair we say. They're being damaged in that process because mm -hmm. the constant pulling. And then when you constantly do your braiding back to back, so you take one out, you do another one immediately, mm. over a period of time, those follicles die out. And that's why women go bald, because the follicles have died. You know? so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is what causes traction alopecia. Okay. Mm. Stress, uh, there, there, there are, there are, I mean, alopecia areta is uh, actually an alopecia caused by an incredible life-changing event. Okay. Uh, when you go to bed and then you wake up the next morning and then you see a patch of baldness on your scalp and you think, mm -hmm. what's happened to my hair? Now, usually it can be either a medical condition or it can be because you're going through a very life-changing event, maybe the bereavement you know, of a close relative or a child. Um, so it's more than a normal day-to-day -day stress we go okay. through. So that's that that so that's what, what, how we say stress can actually lead to hair loss. How about the weather? Because we, we <laughs> tend to cover our hair, you know. Weather, 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 and all of that. weather has nothing to do with uh, really? with hair loss. Yeah, when you wear a wig, what you're doing is you're preventing the the sweat that normally comes out of the body from evaporating into thin hair, and that's why you see a lot of women, yes, you know, with a lot of bacterial <laughs> infection on their scalp, mm. and they're constantly. Uh -huh. <laughs> Patting the hair like that, yeah, because oh, so it's so bacteria? itchy. It's bacteria because bacteria builds up and it gets itchy. Oh. That's why you keep doing this. You well, know? Some of us have itchy scalp. Well, you have to ask why. Okay. <laughs> it's because you know you're sweating. The body, you know, uh, exa uh, you know, you exit, you know, sweat from your glands, mm -hmm. you know. And normally speaking, it evaporates into thin hair, no problem. Mm -hmm. But when you keep it hidden under 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 a wig, it's nowhere to go. So it turns into and it mixes with all manners of things and turns you know to bacterial, and that's what itches people, and that's why they keep patting the hair or their head like that. But how about allergies? Some of us have allergies when you use some of these um, um, extensions for the hair. So, well, I mean, I, I mean, it very much depends on the provenance of the extension. I mean, okay. I couldn't really tell. You know, I mean. Uh, I'm not into the business of okay. uh, hair extensions, so I really don't know how they're made or where they get them from, or you know. All right. uh, let, let me not derail. Um, or let, let, let's keep on track now. Hmm. Weeds, doing this and yeah. all of that. Um, what do we do? We all wear wigs nowadays, doctor. Hmm. Come on. We need well, to well you have to ask why do women <laughs> wear wigs? I mean, it's simply you mentioned earlier, it's to hmm. cover up the hair loss. I mean, you need to deal with the problem. <laughs> Don't just cover it up and hope it will just disappear. It's not going to disappear. It's only going to get worse with wearing wigs. So I've written an article uh, about how wigs can actually lead to further hair loss, precisely because of what I said about the sweat glands mm -hmm. and not allowing the sweat to evaporate and all that. So, I mean, wearing wigs, it's not really a solution. You need to deal with the hair loss. Okay, yeah. okay. Um... 
Apart from wigs, okay, let's mm. we've talked about the hormones and let's come to the men. Yeah. As they grow older, mm. they tend to go bald. Mm. How does, is it genetic? Well, men normally suffer from what we call genetic alopecia, okay. and it's not nothing to relating to age. That's a myth. Okay. Uh, I've consulted with young men as young as 17 who have started saying their hair is thinning. Uh, and I've consulted with men over 50. <laughs> so it, it's, it's so not, nothing to do with age. It's simply your genetics. Because some people, I mean, we, there's a particular hormone that we call dihydrotestosterone, DHT. Mm -hmm. And that's what attacks the follicles in this particular region of the scalp. Now, we all have it, but some people, perhaps because of the genetics, are prone to having DHT destroy the follicles and that's why they go bald. Not everybody goes bald. Yeah, everybody, yes. So but their genetic makeup makes them go bald. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when we come back, we'll be talking about treatments. Okay, let's not lose track now. We've talked about some we've mentioned some causes, um why it happens to us, but let's talk about treatments. We'll be right back after this break. I usually experience hair loss, especially after retouching my hair. I comb it like a few days after and the hair comes out. I didn't see it as a medical condition, but now I know better. I've experienced hair loss and I think it's over two years now. I feel it's as a result of um, stress. I don't take enough rest due to work, um, studies and all that. So I don't have enough time to rest. When I realized this, I felt there's something that, that needed to be done. So I went online to make this stage. I asked friends, neighbors, and all. They told me I could use this, use that. If I take a um, raw egg, if I apply this, it might work. It might. I've tried all of those, it didn't work. So as it is now, I don't know what exactly could um, survey the situation. So I'm living with it. I have full hair. My hair is nice. I don't experience any breakage. I have a lot of, a lot of, you know I'm a Maya Bona, but my own is a little bit better than my Maya own, but seriously, the front is crazy. I've tried and tried and tried, nothing is working. So an extent that I even had to cut the full hair. Uh, hair loss, yes, I think I've experienced, as, as you can see my hair, I'm having a bad head already. No, no, I didn't do anything about it, so I didn't see at anything, so I decided to leave it like this. Hair loss, no. I actually have full hair. Um, even though I cut my hair at will at some point, trying to go natural, then back to PMD and all that, but I don't experience hair loss. I have my neatly cornrows, neatly made cornrows under my wig. Um, I just, I think I put on wigs just to be comfortable. This is a heat season or hot weather. I just, um, I prefer to put my hair whether I, either in braids or I just have my wigs on. Um, so that's why I'm having it on. Eh? Hair loss care? So fear qua. This one does it look like I like this is my original L. Nothing like L. Do I look like Baba Yabo? <laughs> I've no kind of one come. I have actually experienced hair loss. It was when I used to have long hair. My hair has always been natural, so but it was pretty soft. It started with thinning. First of all, my hair was thinning and then it started to break off. I didn't know why at the time. I thought it was stress from, you know, constantly making my hair and then it being pulled. But I tried like different um, hair care products and some of them worked at some point and then some of them didn't work. But I wasn't really bothered because every time it fell, it, it came off, it, it grew back. At the end of the day, I just ended up cutting my hair and I've been, I've been like this since then. I used to braid my natural hair, it's, but it was breaking, I was having hair loss and I had to go and cut it for that reason. That's why I'm wearing wig. I will not take this wig off for you to see because if I do, this camera will explode. I didn't think it was a medical issue, but now I know better. I'll do something about it. You're welcome back. Now it's time to know how we can go through the treatments of having our hair back if you suffer hair loss. So doctor, tell us, what do we do 
you know, with the treatments? There are, there are several treatment options. <clears throat> Usually hair loss starts, you know, when your hair starts thinning. Now, at that stage, if you come into us, you know, we can prescribe some medication, uh, which topical medication or tablets that you could actually take, you know, that would actually slow down or reverse the thinning hair. That's usually, you know, for androgenetic alopecia. Okay. Now, there are also other treatment options like uh, mesotherapy, which is a, a, a method of also injecting minoxidil. Minoxidil is a pharmaceutical product plus some vitamins directly into the scalp to help the follicles, you know, get stronger. And when they get stronger, they produce thicker hair. Uh, and then you've got something we call the platelet-rich plasma therapy, which is uh, taking your blood and then in a, in, a, in a test tube and then place it into a centrifuge machine that spins the, you know, the, the test tube at a very high speed. The, at the end of the spinning process, there's a little uh, uh, residue at the very top of the test tube, which is called the plasma. Now that plasma is then extracted using a syringe and then it's injected back into the scalp. You know, basically, we, you know, that, that method is a way of repairing, using your own blood so, or elements of your blood to repair certain cells okay. that are damaged. That's been in practice for about 20, 30 years in medicine. Yeah. And then you then go on to, you know, perhaps if you've gone bald totally, like some men who have <laughs> gone totally bald and they still want to retain their youth, you know, we've got something called scalp pigmentation, mm -hmm. which is a way of actually giving you a new hairline and, and then giving you a, a look or an appearance that you have hair, but you decided to go on a shaved look. Some, someone like me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then at the very end of the uh, treatment spectrum, you've got the hair transplant, okay. which is basically we're transplanting follicles. It's not actually transplanting hair. Mm -hmm. It's a misnomer. What we're actually doing is we're transplanting follicles surgically mm -hmm. in the areas where we need to transplant them. So you are the donor of those follicles yourselves mm -hmm. because on average, we have about 100 to 150,000 hairs on our scalp, you know, <laughs> and by taking, you know, the strip of skin tissue, usually from the back of the, of the, of the scalp, mm -hmm. and then stitching it back together, we're able to harvest a lot of follicles, hundreds, sometimes thousands of follicles, wow. just from that skin tissue that we've cut out. Now, those follicles are then prepared into what we call grafts, and that, those are the what are then implanted in the areas where you've gone bald. And uh, the process of hair growth and starts all over again. Okay. And uh, those grafts that we've implanted within three months, they'll start producing hair shafts. You start seeing the hair come out. Within six months to nine months, you'd have seen the full effect of what we've done. Interesting. So it's the same for whatever kind of hair you have? Whatever, whatever same yeah, same treatment, yeah, whatever time. And there are some there are some new developments coming on, uh, stem cell uh, stem cell yes. therapy, uh, but they're still very much in the research experimental stage, uh, mostly being you know, advanced by Italians and some American surgeons. Uh, they're not ready yet, you know, for actually you know <laughs> using on everybody, mm -hmm. but it's going to revolutionize hair tra transplant because now you know, transplant is restricted to people who are not too bald. So the more extensive you're bald, the less chances that we're going to be able to offer you a transplant. Oh, okay. But with the stem cell uh, therapy and treatment, you need to just take a tiny little bit of punch biopsy, you know, where you just take a bit of tissue using a special surgical uh, instrument. Mm -hmm. And then from that tiny tissue that you've taken out, you could replicate thousands of follicles in a lab environment. So it doesn't matter whether you're totally bald, you could still have a transplant. Or well, that is the aim. And hopefully in time, maybe they'll perfect that technique and it'll be available to everybody. I'm sure everybody wants to know what are the, what's the cost for all of this, the different types of treatment. <laughs> you know, some people you know, tend to run away when, when they hear. Well, it, it, precisely. But you've got to understand, you know, people spend millions of dollars and euros doing this research. Uh, currently, the stem cell research has been done in the U.S. and Italy for a very simple reason. They've got the resources to do it. Now, nobody's going to spend tens or hundreds of millions of dollars or euros and not expect you know, <laughs> to get something back from it. So, uh, unfortunately, transplants and all these uh, uh, specialist uh, treatment options yeah. are not for everyone. 
unfortunately. I mean, we would like it to be available True. to everybody. As a class, yes. <laughs> Precisely. But, uh, but, you know, it's available to those who find boldness an issue and can afford to actually do something about it. Okay. So, for some people, how can they manage it? So some talk about diet, mm. vitamins. Right. You know, at least for some that have not the very severe yeah. okay, cases, but they can still manage it. So, if, if I'm to avoid some foods and, you know, dwell more on maybe my fruits and vegetables, mm. will it help me mm. in making my hair grow back? I mean, the first thing we do when you come to the clinic is to diagnose okay. exactly what the issue is, you know, and diagnose the type of alopecia you have. Mm. Um, now, some people might come in and say, well, my hair is not growing as much as it used to. Now, that will tell you something. You know, and it's usually down to dietary factors. Okay. So they don't they haven't gone bald. They're just not experiencing the kind of growth they've been used to. Yeah. So in that instance, you know, we might say, Okay, you know what, you might even have a balanced diet, but maybe the elements, you know, the nutrients not being absorbed into your bloodstream mm -hmm. in the right quantities. So you need some supplement to actually help you. That's why we'll pre you know, prescribe supplements for them. Um, Term, you know, to actually suggest what food to eat is not really helpful. I think, yes. you know, just a really run balanced diet. I'm not a nutritionist, so yes. I can't even <laughs> offer the advice anyway. Okay. But just a good balanced diet. That's all you need. Okay. For us women also, we tend to have a lot of oils and creams nowadays mm. for mm. our hair, for our scalp. Yeah. Do creams or oils really do treat <clears throat> our scalp? Right. I think one has to be very careful because there are several claims online about certain products to say, look, you just apply this on mm. your scalp within a week or two, you'll have an afro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a scam. It doesn't work like that. Um, I'm a scientist, so I would never make claim to something until we've actually tested it, mm -hmm. we've trialed it, we've documented it. You know, I mean, so many steps you have to go through before you could then say, now we know this thing works and it would work for possibly 80, 90 percent of people that use it. And right now, the only medication that's gone through that process uh, are two, and you know, but you know, it's been approved by the FDA yes. in the US, and that's minoxidil which is the topical medication for thinning hair, and then finasteride, which is a capsule that men who are prone to androgenetic alopecia can take to prevent uh, hair loss. Okay. Now, after going through the treatments, mm. if, I, if I have to, how mm. do I prevent hair loss? Well, hair loss can be prevented in certain cases. For instance, the traction alopecia or the sacatricia alopecia, I mean, they're usually caused by practices that goes on in the salons. Now, yeah. you know, if you, if you need to have a braid done, why does it have to be so tight? And why do you have to wear it for so long? Why can't you take it off after maybe three weeks and then wait for your hair to relax, your follicles to relax for another three weeks before you do another session? When you go to the salon and you have all manners of products apply to your scalp, maybe it's a glue, maybe it's a chemical relaxer mm. or, the or, or the spray, all manners of things. Do you know the provenance? of those products. Have you actually checked the product to see whether it's been certified for, for use on, you know, on the human skin? I mean, and that's what's NAFDAQ in, the, in, in Nigeria, Nigeria and the FDA in the US are there to do. So all these products need to have gone through rigorous testing to make sure they're safe to be used. Have, they, have you seen that sign that it's actually been certified for use? Mm. So if it hasn't, you need to run away from it because you don't know what's been applied to your scalp and you could end up six months down the line, regretting ever walking to that salon. Yeah, and I, I think sometimes we overdo things. <coughs> we tell you, just take a little bit, mm. and you take so many. Correct, yeah, mm. correct. Yeah, I mean, yet again, I mean, even, if, even when the product is certified for use, yes. is it being used appropriately? Exactly. According to the manufacturers, that's the other thing, yeah. Wow, mm. interesting. Mm. The show continues online. I'm sure there are lots of questions for, for doctor. Um, it's, it's been really, really, really um, informative talking to you about hair loss. And I'm sure we'll do a follow-up on this with um, talking to um, ladies, men, you know, other people when it comes to hair loss. We've been talking to Dr. Ayo Utubanjo. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. Thank, thank you very thank you much. Thank so much for all the information you've given Thanks us. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. I'm very sure you've enjoyed today's program with all the information we've brought your way. Follow us on our various social media platforms. Doctor will be willing to answer all your questions about hair loss, 
treatment and prevention. I've been talking to Dr. Ayo Tubanjo of Vinci Air Clinic in Nigeria. He's a senior consultant and we've heard all of the professional uh, methods and information of what causes air loss, treatment, prevention and a lot more. Thank you so much once again, Doctor. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks for you. Me. Thank you. That's it on Beauty Diaries with Namure. I'll be sure to join us same time next week. Remember to remain beautiful inside and out. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.